Welcome again, everyone, to another plenary session of the ninth Annual International Conference on Sustainable Development. We are extremely excited about this session, uh, the crown jewel, if you will, of the day. It is our great honor and deep pleasure to be hosting the Prime Minister of Bangladesh, and I will turn it over to Professor Sachs to do the honors of introducing her. Lauren, thank you very much, and indeed, uh, Prime Minister, Thank you so much for joining the International Conference on Sustainable Development. We really are greatly honored to be together with you. And we want to wish Bangladesh a happy 50th birthday, first of all. Uh, this is a, a celebratory year. And uh, even though we're in the midst of a big crisis uh, globally, uh, everywhere, uh, we still want to celebrate uh, Bangladesh's uh, achievements. Uh, Prime Minister, one of the things that makes us so excited uh, to be together and uh, we want to hear from you is the fact that when we analyze as the UN Sustainable Development Solutions Network does each year, uh, countries' progress towards the sustainable development goals, Bangladesh came first in the world in most progress between 2015 and 2020. So we want to congratulate you for that achievement, uh, as well as uh, wish Bangladesh a happy birthday. Uh, and I, I want to point out for listeners, uh, as we welcome you, if you look at uh, the uh, the facts of Bangladesh's uh, progress and development, they, they really are wonderful and uh, striking. Uh, back in 1981, literacy was 29% of the adult population. 2019, 75%. 1998, the completion at the lower secondary school was 50%, now 88%. Electrification was only 14% of the population in 1991. Now electricity access is 92%. And one that is a especially clear indicator of the great strides of well being the mortality rate for children under the age of five at independence was 222 children dying before their fifth birthday of every thousand births. By 1991, that had declined to 138 per thousand, still high. By 2019, the mortality rate for under fives was down to 31. So this is a, a sevenfold reduction, which is a tremendous accomplishment. So, Prime Minister, thank you so much for being with us. Let me uh, remind uh, all of the uh, many participants uh, that uh, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina is in her fourth time as Prime Minister uh, at 1996 to 2001, 2009 to 2013, 2014 to 2018, and since uh, December 30th, 2018, uh, when uh, she won uh, the election at the end of 2018, uh, is prime minister until today. Uh, and in between, leader of the opposition uh, in uh, three parliaments. So you have been uh, in the leadership of your country during this time of tremendous progress. So we want to give you personal congratulations as well. And uh, I would like to turn the uh, Microphone over to you, uh, Prime Minister, and I hope that you can share some lessons of Bangladesh's progress, uh, because uh, this is of interest for uh, all of the world. Thank you again for being with us. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Professor Jeffrey Sachs, giving me this opportunity. It's an honor for me and my, my people of Bangladesh. I also thank the Earth Institute Columbia University, Global Masters of Development Practice, and the even Sustainable Development um, Solutions Network for inviting me to the 
ninth annual international conference on sustainable development. It is always a pleasure to be among students, academies, and enlightened people. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, the COVID-19 pandemic has upset the world. It has taken countless lives to upset livelihoods. Millions of people worldwide have been reduced to poverty and hunger. Education is facing huge disruption, especially of children. The climate vulnerable countries like Bangladesh are adversely affected by the pandemic, as well as natural disasters. Our development gains and SDGs progress have been badly hit. In fact, of this turmoil, I thank you for the opportunity to share our experiences and my perspectives on how to build forward better and to get back on track to achieve the 2030 Agenda and the Paris Climate Agreement. As a policy maker, my association with the global development discourse is for is more than two decades. I led Bangladesh in the Millennium Development Summit in, 20, uh, in 2000 in the adaptation of the landmark 2030 Agenda and the Paris Climate Agreement in 2015. Our achievements as MDGs were highly significant. We are recognized by the international community as a development miracle for our success, especially in poverty reduction, food security, gender parity in primary and secondary school, decreasing infant and maternal mortality rate, gender equality, et cetera. Over the past one decade, our poverty rate came down to uh, 20.5, actually it was 31.5%. Now it is 20.5. And our per capita income multiplied more than threefold. The infant mortality rate was reduced to 23.67 per 1,000 maternity mortality rate to 173 per 1,000 live births and longevity of life rose to 73 years. We have set up more than 18,000 community clinics and health cares to cater healthcare services mainly to women and children According to WEF, in political empowerment of women, Bangladesh is ranked seventh ahead of its regional neighbors since 2014. Great emphasis has been laid on female education. The girls' education up to 12th grade has been made free. Primary school students are supported by stipend. Stipend money reaches to mothers or legitimate guardians directly through their mobile phone. About 23 million students have been brought under stipend and scholarship. We have established 20 new public technological and general universities in the country, raising the total number of public universities to 52. Besides, as many as 105 private universities are offering higher education in the country. Female male school enrollment ratio rose to 53 is to 47 in 2017, from 35 to 65 in 2009. Now, you have, perhaps you have noticed that now girls are more than boys. Now we are trying to bring more boys to the school and looking for the why the, the boys are reducing. Enrollment in 
pre-primary and primary level rose to 99%. The increasing female education has significantly lowered in the rate of child marriage. Free books being distributed among students up to secondary level from primary uh, pre-primary to secondary level since 2010. School launches have, uh, launches have also been arranged. As a result, dropouts have drastically decreased. Our SDG journey builds on this success because I believe that education is the main key to reduce poverty. That's why we give more importance to education, vocational education, technical education, etc. Bangladesh is the pioneer in climate change adaptation and mitigation efforts. We have recently submitted an ambitious and updated NDC. We have adopted the Mujib Climate Prosperity Plan focusing on green growth, resilient infrastructure and renewable energy. According to Sustainable Development Reports 2021, published by the University of Cambridge, Bangladesh has improved the most on the SDG index since 2015. Bangladesh is now among the five fastest growing economies in the world and ranked 41st in the terms of GDP. The UN recommended Bangladesh to graduate from LDC category this year. Our graduation comes at a time when we are celebrating the 50th anniversary of our independence and the birth centenary of our father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. Under his leadership, we achieve our independence. I believe that there is no better way to pay tribute to our father of the nation and millions of our freedom fighters. We are on track to fulfill the dream of our father of the nation to build a Shonar Bangla or Golden Bengal, hunger-free society, hunger-free country, hunger and poverty-free country. It was his dream. Since 2015, we have been working hard to integrate Agenda 2030 into our national plans and policies, putting whole of government approach. A high level national committee was formed for the implementation and monitoring of the SDGs. We have already submitted to the NRS in 2017 and 2020, we have done sector specific assessments and integrated SDGs in our eight five year plan. Our second perspective plan has also been aligned with the SDGs. Because I believe that without proper plan, we cannot make any achievement. We have adapted short-term program, mid-term program, and long-term program. It envisions transforming Bangladesh into an upper middle income country by 2031 and a high income country by 2041. The Delta Plan 2000 captured the SDGs vision and beyond. It aimed to create a prosperous and climate resilient delta for our future generation. Future generations uh, must get a better life. That is our aim. We have taken up a coordinated effort involving the government, the private sector, the civil society and other stakeholders to ensure whole of society engagement. To reach people who are furthest behind, we have put additional focus on localizing SDGs. We have launched SDGs tracker. This, this serves as a data storehouse to monitor real-time progress of our SDGs. 
We've invested heavily in our infrastructure capacity. We are launching mega infrastructure projects like Padma Breeze, Dhaka Metro Rail, Karnapuri Tunnel, and Rupu Nuclear Power Plant. Women have been mainstreamed in national development and economic activities, and they are now the backbone of certain vital sectors such as RNG. Our investment in digitization and connectivity has spurred the digital economy, youth-led innovation and transformative socioeconomic changes. This is now also helping us tackle the COVID-19 pandemic better. We have a huge youth population. We have invested heavily in their education and skills development to help them reap the maximum benefit of the digital economy and technological innovation. Dear participants, ladies and gentlemen, the 2030 agenda is a global compact. This is our blueprint for a sustainable and inclusive global development. No single country can achieve this agenda alone. We need enhanced global collaboration and solidarity to advance this agenda. We have already entered the decade of delivery and action of the agenda. Yet the goal seems far away. Even before the COVID-19 pandemic, many countries were off track to achieve the SDGs. The pandemic has pushed them further behind. We need to chart out a bold and ambitious global roadmap to put us back on the SDGs track so that no one is left behind. Let me share a few specific points in this regard. First, the success of SDGs now depends on sustainable recovery from the pandemic, the call of the hour, and with real urgency. Is it ensure vaccines for everyone everywhere is to is to ensure vaccines for everyone everywhere there are many poor countries they cannot buy vaccines so it should make available to them developed country and rich country can come forward second we must close the huge resource gap in the implementation of the 2030 agenda. Third, we are concerned about the rising trend in global poverty. For the first time since 1998, due to the impact of pandemic, our recovery efforts need more focus on job creation, social protection, women empowerment, and science, technology, and innovation. Fourth, we believe that COVID-19 recovery measures should complement climate actions to create stronger resilience against any future shock or calamities. Finally, there must be more focus on enhanced monitoring and support mechanism for SDGs implementation. The UN should have enhanced coordination in this regard. It is also imperative to ensure that there are adequate and timely support measures to withstand emergencies and shocks to avoid any slide back. Scaling up preparedness for pandemic and other emergencies should be done with priority at every level. I shall list it here. I'm happy to respond to any questions you may have. Thank you all for your kind attention. Over to you, Professor Sachs. 
Prime Minister, thank you so much for your wise words and also for illuminating uh, the deep sources uh, of uh, Bangladesh's success. And uh, I, I'd like all of us to take note of several things that you said that I think are really key. Uh, you put education at the center of the economic development. I think that this is exactly right and a very powerful message. Uh, I note, uh, by the way, that uh, Bangladesh uh, in the most recent data, as I mentioned in the year 2018, has a, second, a, a lower secondary school completion rate of 88%. Pakistan, by contrast, is only half of that, 48%. You've really put the kids in school. And I think uh, it must be uh, also the magic touch that you have really emphasized the girls' education uh, because uh, this is absolutely essential. You also notice now the issue is getting the boys in school. Uh, we have the same issue in the United States. Uh, interestingly, there's a huge gap the, uh, um, at the university level uh, young women are outnumbering uh, the young men by quite a margin, and it's rising. Girls are probably just better, I think, is, is the truth, but uh, somehow we have to help the boys too. But uh, I think your message is, is really powerful on this. And I wasn't sure that, but I think that that is probably number one key to your success. Second, you mentioned uh, plan which I also subscribe to because we need planning. We need the government to be able to look ahead, not a week or a month or uh, the next to vote, but a plan that is systematic for public investment, for building infrastructure, for educating children, for building the clinics that you talked about, the thousands of clinics around the country. A third point you mentioned, of course, was the embrace of the whole sustainable development agenda. So you put a uh, high level task force to work on the SDGs right from the start. And uh, also prime minister, it's very gratifying to hear from you, the focus on future generations, because this is the vision of really investing in the future. I think you gave us a lot of uh, powerful insights into Bangladesh's very rapid, very uh, impressive, and very inspiring progress. You also mentioned several challenges for the world, which uh, I want to make sure people hear and that your voice is well heard this week at the UN. One is vaccination for all. It has just been grossly unfair, inequitable, and dangerous how countries have been left out and left behind of the vaccine access. President Biden is hosting a vaccine summit on Wednesday, but I wanna make sure that all of the vaccine producing countries, the US, EU, UK, China, India, Russia, are there all cooperating and all giving the leadership to the UN, which could get this job done but so far hasn't been able to get vaccines because the companies are giving them to the rich countries. The rich countries are standing in front of the queue and even the UN can't buy them because the rich countries have export quotas. So Wednesday, I'm hoping for a big breakthrough. And I think your voice is very powerful for that. Vaccines for all, no more delay, and empower the UN to do its job, which it can do. A second point you mentioned dear to my heart is finance. Resources need to flow to Bangladesh, to other countries that are have the way to get high returns on investment, but then can't get access to capital. And so we need to make sure that you have an expanded access to financial flows on good favorable terms. Third, you emphasized empowering the poor, empowering women, empowering excluded groups, and delay no, lose no time 
in that empowerment right now, especially in the midst of our current crisis. And fourth is the need for climate action. And Bangladesh, with all the successes, is vulnerable because of what the rest of the world is doing. The rising sea levels for a country that is a low-lying Delta country, we need action in the whole world. And I really uh, thank you for your strong voice in that. Finally, I wanna underscore this very impressive uh, timing that by 2031, Bangladesh aspires to be an upper middle income country and in 2041, uh, a high income country. We're gonna give you all support uh, for that. Those are bold and uh, impressive and achievable goals. And uh, please count on uh, all of us listening and the Sustainable Development Solutions Network to be supporting you in that. And Prime Minister, I, I, we, we made a, an award, which you will get uh, in, in person, uh, but uh, right now, I will uh, just show it online. Uh, this is uh, an award presented to Bangladesh for the prime minister for the largest increase in the Sustainable Development Goal Index score between 2015 and 2020. This is great progress. You're running the fastest race. We are really thrilled. Uh, and uh, you have uh, your, your copy there. We're really honored to be delivering this uh, for the people of Bangladesh. And thank you for your leadership for the SDGs. Thank you very much. All the comments you made, it's really very, very encouraging. Professor Sachs, distinguished participant, I am deeply honored to accept this award on behalf of the people of Bangladesh. I would like to thank ICSD for honoring the people of Bangladesh by this award. This award is a testimony of our endeavors engaged in achieving SDGs. Leaving no one behind is a key part of the SDGs. We will continue our efforts in the march towards progress and prosperity so that no one is left behind. I dedicate this award to my countrymen, our countrymen, our people. With the help of them, we achieve our, well, independence, as well as whatever I have done is only their support. As you know that I have lost, except my younger sister, whole family. My father was the president of Bangladesh, including my mother, my three brothers, two sister-in-laws, my uncles, all, I mean, almost 18 members of my family was assassinated in 1975. I and my sister and myself, we were abroad that time. We were in Germany, so we survived. We couldn't come back to our country for a long time, for six years, because military dictators didn't allow us to come back. But when I received support from my people and my party, Bangladesh Awamili, I was able to return my home in 1981. Since then, I have been working to achieve this goal. No one will be landless or homeless. This is our aim. We are making free of cost. We are providing houses for the poor people, landless homeless people. It's an each and every people should get food. At least two meals per day. We, we achieve that. And that way, there are many other area. We need lots of time to explain. I know there is time. Uh, well, time is too short. Time is very limited. I cannot explain everything. But I am trying all my best to fulfill my father's dream. You are in yes, exploitation free society. Peace and harmony. That is our main aim. Thank you very much. And I dedicated this to my people. 
Prime Minister, you. You, are, you are inspiring us, and uh, we all want to wish uh, you and all the people of Bangladesh a happy 50th birthday uh, and uh, all success going forward. Uh, as we start to travel again, I'm looking forward to being uh, back in Dhaka. It's been uh, too too long that we can't move, uh, but I hope that I can call on you uh, at home uh, in, in your beautiful country, uh, and I look forward to seeing you there. But I want to uh, thank you so much for uh, being with us uh, at this conference. Uh, you've uh, touched a lot of people, and a lot of people have heard you, uh, and will draw lessons from you, and uh, will hear your powerful call to action so that nobody is left behind. Uh, be sure of that. Thank, thank you, you so I, much. I, I extend my invitation to you to come to Bangladesh. Now you should see the Bangladesh. <laughs> I, the change uh, we make. I, you should come. Please. I'm excited. I'm excited to do that, and uh, I, I look forward to that very much. Let me uh, thank you, and uh, mm -hmm. we will turn it over to uh, Lauren uh, to uh, help us close. Uh, Lauren uh, Barreto, who has uh, brilliantly organized uh, all of our sessions. Uh, and Lauren, if I could ask you to uh, help uh, uh, thank uh, all the people that have made ICSD uh, possible, I would be most grateful. And for all the people listening, thank you for participating uh, in the conference. Uh, and. Uh, we're so uh, honored and grateful to hear the Prime Minister of Bangladesh. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. We are grateful to all of you for tuning in and no one more so than the Prime Minister. Again, it has been our deep pleasure to host you. We have another set of sessions starting in about 40 minutes. I threw the link to the program into the chat. So again, thank you, Prime Minister, and we look forward to seeing everybody online for our next session in about 40 minutes. Thank you. Bye now. Thank you.